Hi everyone, thank you for gardening with me. My name is Melissa and I'm gonna be working in the backyard today, I'm tackling a few projects. I want to plant some lavender and also um, get my asparagus wrangled up and ready to go to seed. Um, I'll probably find some more chores along the way, but I thought I'd bring you along with me and hopefully that'll inspire you to get out in your own yard and maybe answer a few questions. Um, if you have any questions for me, please feel free to just drop a message. Thanks, here we go. And I want to take you and show you the other project that I have for today, but on the way there I wanted to show you this project that's coming up in July and my husband's taking a vacation and he's going to help me with it. I um, had shoulder surgery this year. Normally I would do it myself, but can't do it right now. He's going to uh, bring in a couple truckloads of soil for me and I'm going to mound that area right up and tie in this bed with that bed and kind of let it reflect this area over here, but I'm going to put some evergreens and shrubs and perennials and obviously pretty flowers. And we got a little squirrel over there. Not intimidated at all that I'm standing right here. <laughs> but um, so that'll be really nice. And so today what I'm going to be working on is this little area right here. I'm going to be planting some um, lavender. And I have this grass in a nice little row but normally my plantings are not in a row at all they're just kind of grouped together so I need to decide if I want to plant my lavender in a row and kind of mimic that curve or if I want to do just a grouping of lavender and then maybe bring in another plant like my um, perennial geraniums to kind of go in another grouping next to it so I'm gonna put the camera down and bring my plants over. So this is option one. Not sure how I feel about that. Keep in mind this is going to connect this bed right here. So I'm not sure if I want to do it in a row like that or a grouping. So I'm gonna change it around a little bit and show you the section, second option. So here's option number two, putting it just in a patch like this. So we will have a nice wave of lavender there and then I'll put other perennials there. And obviously when I tie in both the beds, I'll be putting shrubs and evergreens like I'd mentioned before. So I think I just need to step back for a minute and take a look at it. Leave me a comment and let me know what your opinion is. If you like it straight in a row like soldiers or maybe more loose like this. I definitely do not have anywhere near a formal garden. I do like things to be nice and tidy, which this is anything but. But I've been trying to put my blinders on to it for a while and uh, pick my battles as I go. So anyway, I'll let you know what I decide and leave me a comment and let me know what you think. So I did go ahead and get three of them planted up. I decided to plant them in a grouping because I'm not quite sure the angle that um, we're gonna be putting the new bed in. So I figure I'll put them in a grouping like this and I can add to the grouping. I can um, move them down the road if I ever want to. But I did get three of them planted already, but I wanna go ahead and see if I can set the camera up so you can see how I'm planting the other ones um, here's the plant and then um, I thought it would be a great idea to put landscaping fabric down when I put this garden bed in and while it has um, done a great job at keeping the weeds down uh, it kind of stifles the plants a little bit so if you put perennials in that you want to spread they're only going to spread as far as the hole that you have given them in the landscaping fabric. So I think what I'm going to have to do is go around eventually and um, just cut out a little area outside of the perennials so that they just have a little bit more room to spread. And um, the soil here isn't bad. We are in Ohio. This is 
five. They may have changed it to a zone six. Um, soil's not bad, but what I am doing is I'm adding a little bit of extra soil to the bowl and also some slow release fertilizer. And then I just mix that in with my hand. I used to really rough up the roots pretty good when I was planting perennials, never on annuals. Um, but research lately has shown that you're better off to just kind of leave them alone. Maybe fluff them just a little bit if you see that they're root bound some, just so they know if they're going in a fresh area. But try not to break any of the roots. That's the new research that I've seen anyway. And uh, I'm willing to give it a shot. So here we go. This is the finished product. I forgot to tell you what I planted was uh, English lavender. And then I also have one Munstead lavender in there. And lavender is full sun. Uh, this is a perennial, so it should come back every year. There are lavender plants out there that are not perennial found that out last year when I discovered that my lavender was dead this year so now I make sure that I get the ones that are hardy to zone 5 which we are and um, so I'll give you a quick tour what this looks like some strawberries here my husband's banana tree that he's so excited about it's supposed to grow like 15 feet this year <laughs> so we're really excited about that we love the tropical look Black Eyed Susans um, have some toad lily right there, and that flowers in the late summer. It gets super tall and beautiful. Uh, Cedamatum Joy there. Roses, day lilies. Um, this is my yellow iris that I love so much. It's just about done. And then we have some roses behind that. The new lavender just planted. Um, this is a grass, not quite sure what kind it is. This is a huge, gigantic um, pasta. Hard to see how big they are, but um, it's they're huge, huge leaves, huge leaves. Uh, Data leaves again. We have uh, lamb's ear here. A little pasta back there that's kind of getting eaten alive. This is my obedient plant, which I said it's not quite so obedient that needs to come out. I have some echinacea back in there purple cone flower, uh, hostas, little fern poking up back in there. I don't know if you can see them. Um, there's an annual. I don't really have a lot of annuals in here yet this year. I will. Kind of holding off until we get um, the new bed put in because I think I would like to focus my finances this year on some shrubs and then next year I can come back. Maybe I'll even grow some from seed. We'll see. Uh, this is spiderwort, bishop's weed, which also is another very aggressive flower. It was going all the way around this iris, and I didn't get any buds on this iris this year. And I planted this one at the same time and got all these beautiful buds on that. So that is another one that's going to have to go back into the back. That's my butterfly bush. Um, Sage there. We have yarrow that I just planted this spring. We'll see how that does. Um, there's some delphiniums that I also just planted this spring. I'm hoping that next year they become a little more um, strong, I guess is the word. They seem kind of frail right now. I had to give them a little trellis to hold them up. And um, this is my hardy geranium. Here that are just absolutely covered in buds. So those are getting ready to explode. Columbine, more geraniums. Got my vegetable garden over there with some Siberian iris. We also have down here something that I'm really excited about that I planted this year. Is a this is a city light or city lime Paris hydrangea and it's proven winners 
and it's supposed to stay pretty small but it's just covered in buds so I'm really excited to see what that's going to look like and then we've got some portulaca surrounded there by the vegetable garden anyway that's it thanks for watching